And that'll do it for 4 News Now. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful and safe Thanksgiving holiday. Stay close. I'm joining Kelly Craig from Channel 4 News at 6. Good night, folks. Tonight at 6, a Channel 4 News exclusive. A woman stopped and attacked right in front of her own children. Can you send me the rest of school? My mom has an seizure. Life and death hangs in the balance. How kids save lives. Teresa Rodriguez, special report, 911 rescues. The Channel 4 News at 6 is next. Stay with us. Channel 4 News. Kelly Craig. Tony Segreto, Brian Norcross, Ed Smith, live, this is Channel 4 News at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. A woman stalked and beaten tonight so badly she is barely alive. The attack coming in front of her two kids and in spite of a restraining order against her ex-boyfriend. It is a Channel 4 News exclusive from reporter Nick Bogert. <laughs> Eddie and Debbie were together a couple of years, but her sister says it was never love. The whole reason that he was allowed to stay here was because at least if he was staying here, he wouldn't try to kill her. Marjorie says her sister Debbie Baker gave in to guilt and intimidation. Eddie Sangroni is now accused of using his fists on Debbie Baker when guilt and intimidation failed. Debbie is in extremely critical condition. If she lives, there may be brain damage. She did not look to the legal system for any help till just last Thursday. They told her if she filed a restraining order that he would have to stay away. And, and that would be, that she would be fine. You've got someone who's got a pretty violent record. Judge Harvey it's Baxter says he looked at Sangroni's past and Debbie Baker's uh, claim that Eddie had broken in and raped her the day before and issued a restraining order last Thursday. I felt it was that's urgent that we got the sheriff immediately and made service that very same day which is unbelievably fast moving for any system. But the restraining order apparently did not keep Eddie away from Debbie's home. Neighbor Brandy Saylor says he was back several times over the weekend with a policeman to pick up one or two personal items he'd left behind. They just kept on letting him waltz in and out of here. I was standing right there when it happened. The cop goes, don't worry about a guy. A couple days, it'll all settle down. You'll be back in the house. Monday night, Eddie apparently came back right after Debbie and Brandy had finished watching the NBC movie Fatal Matrimony. We watched it, and all I keep thinking of, the terror that was and her watching him come in here. Police reports say Eddie beat Debbie with his fists and pounded her head against this wall. Her family thinks the system failed her in a big way, but Judge Baxter says court orders alone cannot do much. Now what you tell them is I've got a piece of paper and I demonstrate this very simply. Paper doesn't stop knives, guns, bullets, fists, or anything else. It's a piece of paper and if we have non-law-abiding punks out there, all the paper in the world doesn't do a thing. At the Publix where she worked, there is shock and grief and an effort to raise money for Debbie Baker. Debbie had missed the enrollment period for insurance for this year, and at this present time, Debbie has no medical insurance. At this point, the uh, Publix employees are trying to set up a trust fund at the Barnett Bank on Northeast 19th Avenue in North Miami Beach. Still being set up. We will have more information on that later, Kelly. Really an awful story. Horrible. What about her two children? I can't imagine them having to watch this happen to their kids, mother. Kids were in the home along with one neighbor's child, a uh, one-and-a-half-year-old daughter that she had by Eddie, uh, and, and then a six-year-old from a prior uh, uh, liaison of some sort of marriage, I guess. Where are they and, now? Uh, they're with relatives at this point. The six-year-old particularly really saw it all happen, oh, apparently. Pitiful. All right. Thank you, Nick. Two construction workers killed today when a crane touched high-voltage power lines in Northwest Dade. The men were installing a concrete base for a new traffic light at the intersection of 40th Street and Northwest 102nd Avenue. But the crane's cables touched the power line and two workers were electrocuted. Two others are in stable condition tonight at Palmetto General Hospital. In moments of crisis, the numbers 911 can save lives. Dispatchers taking desperate rescue calls, sometimes from kids who can barely talk. Tonight, a special report. 911 Rescue from Channel 4's Teresa Rodriguez. Kids, barely old enough to read or write, making the right call. 911. A five year old saves his baby sister from choking to death. A seven year old who saved her mother dozens of times. 
A six-year-old rescues a passed out parent. A six-year-old escapes a gunman in her house. South Florida kids making amazing 911 rescue calls. October 26th, seven-month-old Katrina Sanchalima plays on the floor. At Coral Gables Fire Rescue, the call comes in. Katrina's mother had gone downstairs just long enough for the baby to pull a button off her father's shirt and swallow it. So I grab her and I turn her on her back right. and she's here like not breathing. Okay, she's she's like choking. The button was clogging Katrina's windpipe. All of a sudden Christian says, Mommy, shouldn't we call someone? Without being told, five-year-old Christian goes for the phone. And then I grab it and then I call 911. Angie Sanchalima rushes to a bathroom phone. When I realized that I really had to call help, they were already on the phone. This lady is on the other line, screaming hysterical. Her baby can't breathe. The call is passed to dispatcher Esther Garcia. She started telling me that it wasn't working and the button was not coming out and her baby was turning blue and she was having trouble breathing. Paramedic Woody Bryce, who was passing by the communications room, is called in. If you can just imagine having your child um, clinically dead, I mean, as far as she knows at the time, not breathing. Bryce tells her to keep hitting the baby in the back. So I go, I go like this three times and there goes the button and she cries no, it's out. It's out. baby katrina spit out the button and is breathing again five-year-old christian was honored as a 911 hero here at dade county's 911 communications center thousands of emergency calls come in every day does he have a gun is anybody hurt People who take these calls can put tragedy behind them for the most part. But there is special concern when a child calls. Dade County Police and Fire. Hello, my mom having a seizure. Okay, you're doing really good. It's not the first time seven-year-old Janae Nichols calls 911 to save her mother. This Carroll City Fire Rescue crew is summoned here three or four times a month. The first time I rolled up on the scene and had this little girl answer the door is really surprising. Coming to find out this little girl was the one who was actually calling 911. Each time, the crew finds Janae's mother, Judy, passed out in an epileptic seizure. Can you send me the rest of Scott? My mom having a seizure. What address, honey? 21, Janae knows her part perfectly because she's been making life-saving 911 calls since age four. Janae. Nickel. Okay, how old are you? Seven. Each time she, she saves me. And when I come back, you know it's a blessing. It never ceases to amaze us that uh, a child of that age is able to dial 911 and to remember her address, her phone number. And that is now a very special relationship. Now, Christian, the little boy we saw, learned how to call 911 at school. Now, even as young as three or four, it's important children know their name, address, and phone number, and how to call 911. It could save someone's life, and as we've seen, it has. And tonight at 11, we'll, have, we'll meet two more amazing 911 rescue callers, both of them kids. And these children are amazing. Amazing indeed. Thank you, Teresa. Mm -hmm. Kelly? The day before Thanksgiving traditionally means busy roadways and airports, but this year you might be able to say adios to holiday headaches, at least in South Florida. Take a look. This is a scene at Miami International Airport, and really it hardly looks like a holiday. In fact, some airlines say they expect to lose business this year. Many folks say they simply can't afford to fly this holiday season. 29 million Americans hitting the roads for the holiday. Channel 4 crews have been keeping an eye on things all day. And here's a look at the turnpike just after noon. Traffic is actually actually better than usual. And here's the latest from Sky 4. This is the scene over the same turnpike less than an hour ago. Traffic has picked up and it's expected to get worse as travelers try to get a jump start on the Thanksgiving holiday. Snow causing some major headaches for holiday travelers around the nation. Here's a roundup in Kansas City, for example. The roads were downright treacherous as travelers dared the interstates and other highways. In Des Moines, Iowa, at least four to six inches of snow. Schools let out early and travelers hit the roads cautiously. And in northwestern Oklahoma, travelers struggled with a powerful storm that shut down many highways. Homes destroyed. 
families torn apart. What do the victims of Hurricane Andrew have to be thankful for this year? Well, plenty when you think about it. It seems Channel 4's Susan Wallace proves tonight the human spirit is extremely strong. But it's time now to leave. She lives in a neighborhood where there are no neighbors. Three of them were killed in the storm. The rest have left. Yet Carolyn Eskow is still holding her home together. Actually, I keep so busy that uh, it's, it's not really depressing. I think my worst problem is mosquitoes. Eskow has stayed in Naranja Lake since the storm, but cannot stay here much longer. It's too sad. And on the eve of this holiday, she is thankful. I'm very grateful that I'm alive, that I, I left and that I'm alive. And I'll pick up the pieces and things will be better. Things will be better after this. In a Florida city home where progress is measured in sheets of plywood, Lucille Wood says life is already better. She's not had a drop to drink since the storm and has been reunited with family. Oh, yeah, I'm a whole lot better. I done got me a little job. I'm trying to find me a nice, decent place to stay. Her surroundings are still very primitive, but again, Woods is very thankful. It made me straighten up and realize I have a lot to live for, too. At Country Walk, where it appears time stands still, Jim Crudson has not. He has single-handedly rebuilt a wrecked home, and this Thanksgiving worries about those who cannot. I'm sad in some respects that um, other people um, are not able to put their homes back together again like I've been able to do. Um, people that didn't have insurance, um, people that aren't able to do it. Crudson still has trouble looking outside his home, and he, like the others, looks forward to a new year, a chance to put this one behind him. In Kendall, Susan Wallace, Channel 4 News. <laughs> Folks down there really have a lot of courage, don't they? They certainly do. God We've seen that since Hurricane Andrew. Absolutely. The time right now is 6.10. Brian has our Thanksgiving Day forecast coming up on the Channel 4 News at 6. I'm Ari Osher in front of Buckingham Palace in London. England, of course, has always been known for its royalty, for its great sense of pageantry, and it's also known among tobacco lovers as a place to buy great Cuban cigars. We'll have that story coming up next. And later, tattoos. They're the fashion statement of the 90s. Wait a minute, they were the oh, fashion statements of the goodness. 70s. We're just finding out about them now. Find out who's adding a little flash to their flesh. <laughs> when the Channel 4 News at 6 continues, I can tell you one person. It has four independent motors, an intricate steel frame, even an electronically regulated temperature control system. And that's just the driver's seat. The Lexus ES300 luxury sedan. I play the year we were married, 1946. Wrong. They're in the air, they're on the ground, even on the door. I turn 2312 into 5000. People play Play 4 because it pays more. I won a lot with a number from the lot. $5,000 for every winning $1 straight play. 1944. Wrong. Hundreds win thousands every day, so play Play 4. 1934. The daily game that pays more. 1949. <laughs> Thousands of gift items, savings of 50 to 70 percent. The Ross After Thanksgiving Sale, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Opens 8 a.m. Friday. Don't be late. Dixie Crystals. Pure cane sugar. For 75 years, the finest sugar. For 75 years, pure and natural. Dixie Crystals. For 75 years, a sweet taste of the sun. This is a special announcement from the Acura dealers of South Florida. All South Florida Acura dealers have received special factory assistance that will provide extraordinary savings on all 92 and 93 Acura Legends. This is in addition to the thousands you can save during the 92 closeout sale going on now. These luxury automobiles are available at the biggest savings of the year. 
So don't outspend your neighbors, outsmart them at the Southeast Florida Acura Dealers now. Now, Channel 4 News at 6 continues. They are Cuba's most prized product. We're not talking about sugarcane, we're talking about Cuban cigars. And Fidel Castro hopes this hot commodity will give a boost to his very troubled economy. You see, those cigars are sold around the world. Channel 4's Ari Adzer has the exclusive from London. This is the correct way of lighting the cigar. And once I'm through with it, it will be all ready to be enjoyed. As we say, it will be at its cruising point. Cruising with a Cuban cigar. It's the passion of all cigar lovers. Delicious. Ed Sahakian sells the world's finest cigars. His London shop has a special Havana room where the temperature and humidity are both regulated to make these rolls of tobacco gold feel at home. We get a lot of uh, Americans, particularly those with the Cuban connections, who come into our Havana room and take a deep breath and say, this is how it used to be back home, and we're going to go back there one day soon. Think of this as something like a wine cellar. Good cigars need three or four years to mature and are priced in the fine wine range. One sells for nearly $40. But just because you can buy the finest Havana cigars here in London doesn't mean you can smoke them back in Little Havana. The best you can do is smoke them while you're in London because bringing those cigars back into the United States is still illegal. The U.S. trade embargo against Cuba makes these cigars forbidden fruit for Americans. Sahakian just got back from Cuba two weeks ago. We visited two factories and it was incredible to see that the cigars are still made more or less in the same way they used to be made 100, 200 years ago. Fidel Castro relies on these throwbacks to the pre-Castro era. The Cuban economy desperately needs the hard currency fetched by its cigar sales. Do you ever feel like, like you're propping up a dictator over there? I, I don't see myself getting involved in the politics of it. Uh, I'm selling a product that gives pleasure and joy. Uh, the people who make these cigars, they're lovely people. They're wonderful people. So Sahakian tries to separate politics from pleasure. But some people would smell oppression in that cigar smoke. They're waiting for a day when there's nothing political about puffing a Cuban cigar. In London, Ari Anzer, Channel 4 News. Well, now you can get the latest news from Cuba whenever you want it. All you have to do is call Channel 4's Cuba Hotline. Every day, we update information from the island in English and Spanish. The number to call, 358-8000, code 4000, and it's available 24 hours every day. Time now is 616. Your Turkey Day forecast from... Do I say it? No, don't. Don't say it. No? The oh. beloved Brian Norcross. How's that? Okay. Also coming up, <laughs> Ned Smith will have a preview uh, of sports. He'll be live from the arena. And look at that, the turkey ball. You have to have it on Thanksgiving Eve. We'll be right back. Channel 4 Weather is brought to you in part by Shell Oil. Have you decided what you're getting me for Christmas? I'll bet it's something fun, yet personal. Charlie Brown's new Christmas video makes the perfect gift only $4.99, only at Shell. Red is my favorite color, you know. there's a brand new way to brighten your holidays. The all-new Charlie Brown Christmas video. Only $4.99, only at Shell. Your Toyota dealer's making this a November to remember. The list of new Toyota shipments is the biggest in years. Big shipments means big deals. Right now, you can lease the totally redesigned 93 Corolla with air, AM, FM, stereo, cassette, power steering, and airbag for $179 a month. That's a new Corolla for just $179 a month. Hurry to your Toyota dealer because we may never see Toyota shipments this big again. Mervyn's three-hour specials start Friday, 7 a.m. Save 50% on these three-hour specials and more. Don't miss it. Here, let's go! Paul Simon speaks exclusively to a current affair about the murder of his South African friend. This is disgusting. I would have thought that this couldn't have happened. Simon says on the next A Current Affair. A Current Affair on Channel 4 at 7 after NBC Nightly News. Tattoos are still the rage in Hollywood, but while some stars can't wait to show theirs off, others can't wait to get theirs off. Plus, this man is the real young Indy, Harrison Ford, in the early years on Entertainment Tonight. Entertainment Tonight, 7.30 on Channel 4 after A Current Affair. 
If you'd spent the last 95 years selling cars, you'd make a big deal out of it, too. We're celebrating Oldsmobile's 95th birthday with $199 payments. The 93 Achieva with factory air and automatic transmission, just $199 a month. Or the 93 Old Sierra with cruise control, power locks, and more, only $199 a month. Hurry, when the celebration ends, so do these $199 deals at your Sunshine Oldsmobile dealers. You're watching Channel 4 News at 6. I should have said he was a turkey, and you wouldn't let me. <laughs> it was written down It was written that way, and I said, I don't know about this. This is a Thanksgiving tradition with me. What an appropriate This hat. is for uh, cooking in the kitchen. You know, some people hey, have their thing, and do I you know? Mine. Do you know how many calories an average Thanksgiving meal is? It's oh. way too many. Over 3,600 calories. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's the storm center back there, I think. Al Conklin out here. Uh, talking about Thanksgiving, we, we got to talk about holiday homes because once again this year we are going to be. <laughs> I love this hat. We are going to be on the holiday homes tour all over South Florida, looking for the brightest and the best of the holiday homes. And we want to hear from you if you're decorating in a big way this year. Write to me, Brian's Holiday Homes. <laughs> There you see the address, WGVJ 316 North Miami Avenue, Miami 33128. Phones are ringing Out. already. <laughs> yeah. Look at the International Place in downtown Miami. Lit up beautifully tonight. Checking the numbers here downtown. A magnificent night, 79. Feels like 86 with the humidity 86%. Winds out of the southeast at 5. No rain here today. Temperature is looking great. 80 degrees, very popular, a little cooler. In the inland sections, the allergy report today, mold tie, pollens moderate, and the cockleburr weed is the main offender. I don't think I can stand that anymore. Okay, here you go now with the storm track radar. Hopefully you're not heading for Tallahassee for Thanksgiving because look at the storms moving through the panhandle this evening. Heavy, heavy storms right here off of Panama City and heading on up uh, to the north. Al Conklin, when that thing is ready, if you go ahead and uh, roll that for me, I'd appreciate it. It must be either it's stuck or something there. Anyway, this is a very heavy line of thunderstorms, and they have up here in southwest Georgia flood washes, and that goes all the way up into the Atlanta area with these very heavy storms that are moving on up to the north. All right, let's take a look at the national weather map now. And what you see across the country are temperatures that are mild in the south, but this is where the heavy rain is. And then they cool off a little bit, but still not too bad at New York. But the thing that's going on up there is that it has not, the sun hasn't come out in like three weeks now. And it's going to stay cloudy as all this cold air from the eastern part of the country slides on over, or from the middle, middle part of the country slides on over to the east. Here's the way the weather map looks right now, because now this for your traveling situation here. The real bad spot is from Iowa back down toward Kansas, up into uh, Wisconsin around Madison where it's snowing, and then on back out into the plains. Then it gets into drizzle around Chicagoland, and that extends over Ohio, and then on to the northeast where it's a mixture of rain and fog, and then we get into those very strong thunderstorms we see down here. The uh, New England area is not too bad yet, but now tomorrow, what's going to happen for Turkey Day? The snow tapers off, what we call backlash snow coming back around the low as the cold air pours into the Midwest. It's going to be rain on the Macy's Day Parade tomorrow, and it could be heavy. Fog and drizzle for New England, and the heavy showers continue, but most of that is going to stay to our north, so I think we're going to have a good Thanksgiving Day here. For the boaters, southeast winds about 15 knots. That's going to tend to keep the storms to our north. Three to five feet in the open sea and a moderate chop in the bay. Tonight, no turkey at all. <laughs> Record mild temperatures, about 75. 86 tomorrow, wonderfully warm. Put a slight chance of an afternoon or evening thunderstorm in there, but I'm really not too excited about that. Becoming much more likely Friday into Saturday, cold front comes through. And right now we're thinking better and a little cooler on Sunday. That's it. See you at 11, Tony and Kelly. Go All get right. your hat. <laughs> Time right now, 621. Next, Ned and sports. A complete wrap-up live from the Miami Arena. Can they bounce back against the Pacers? Ned will tell you when the Channel 4 News at 6 continues. Channel 4 Sports is brought to you in part by Nissan. The new Nissan Altima comes equipped with liquid-filled engine mounts that significantly reduce vibration and engine noise. Hey, haven't I seen this before? And while you've seen a demonstration like this done for a luxury car before... I thought so. You've never seen it done for one that starts at $13,000. That's refreshing. The new Nissan Altima. It's time to expect more from a car.
after Thanksgiving sale. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Opens 8 a.m. Friday. Don't be late. This is Bob from FPL with a special message for Dade County residents who are repairing or rebuilding their homes. FPL wants you to rebuild an energy efficient home, so we're offering incentives for high efficiency central cooling and heating systems, water heating systems, and testing for leaks in air conditioning ductwork. Now it's easier for Dade residents to qualify for as much as $1,000 in incentives for these programs. Just use an FPL participating independent contractor. If you live in Dade and would like more information, call us now at 1-800-DIAL-FPL. It's Christmas at Home Depot, where you'll find the most useful gifts of all. Like this Ryobi 10-inch table saw system for power and precision, just $536. Or this Ryobi 4.5-inch orbital sander. It's twice as fast as ordinary sanders, only $69.42. And this versatile Ryobi 16-inch scroll saw for precision cutting of all types of materials, just $126. Happy Holidays from Home Depot, where low prices are just the beginning. Rockin' around the Christmas tree, have a happy holiday. Everyone dancing merrily in the new old-fashioned way. Over the years, we've been your first choice for a lot of last-minute celebrations. Hecker, your home for the holidays for 40 years. Everyone dancing merrily in the new old-fashioned way. It's the most innovative and exciting lineup in our history. Introducing Jeep and Eagle for 1993. See the technically advanced new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the sophisticated new Eagle Vision. Get a Cherokee Sport for less than you ever dreamed possible. Or jump into fun-loving Jeep Wrangler at a price like this. But whatever you do, don't miss the 93s at your Jeep and Eagle dealer today. See your Florida Jeep and Eagle dealer. Now, Channel 4 News at 6 continues. His music advocates peace. Tonight, singer-songwriter Paul Simon speaks out in an exclusive interview pleading for peace in South Africa after the tragic death of his South African friend. The singer, known as the Headman, was allegedly shot and killed by a white off-duty security guard. A judge dropped all charges against the guard, and that has Simon outraged. Don't miss this rare one-on-one -on -one with Paul Simon on A Current Affair right here on Channel 4 at 7 o'clock. All right, it is sports time. We're going to go out to the arena in a bizarre situation, Ned. Last night, the Heat played uh, in Indiana, got beaten pretty badly, and now they're back at the arena tonight playing the same team and certainly hoping to do much better. That's right. you got to hope they do much better. Of course, the holiday season starts tomorrow, but right now the Miami Heat aren't celebrating too much. Last night, they lost their fourth game in a row. They went to Market Square Arena in Indiana, low part of the season against the Pacers, a place where they have never won. Miami shot a measly 35% from the floor and were near, never really in the game. The Pacers won it by 32, 114-82. Joining me now, head coach of the Miami Heat, Kevin Lockery. I guess even despite a loss like that, it's not time to really punch the panic button right now. Oh, no, no, none whatsoever. We're only able to play Ronnie Cycle 17 minutes. He probably shouldn't have played at all. He has the flu, and uh, he's questionable for tonight. So uh, there's, no, there's no need to, to be panicking. I think we played poorly after looking at the films. You're disappointed, but we missed a lot of easy shots. Uh, we... The good thing about the NBA, you got an opportunity to come back and play the same team tonight. So uh, we'll see what happens tonight. Any lineup changes if Ronnie can't go? I mean, obviously you got to do something. Though. Yeah, if Ronnie doesn't go, we'll go with John Sally in the middle, and then we'll back uh, we'll back up with uh, Kessler and Geiger. What's it like playing a team back to back, particularly after you've lost to them by 32 the night before? Well, I think it's a situation you know exactly what to expect from both from the team and. Uh, you know, you're coming home, you have an advantage coming home, but it, it's a very good basketball team. They, they made a major trade, they like their team, they're very explosive, they come off the bench with good people. It's a good basketball team, but, uh, you know, we're here in our own building, we got to create what we did last year in this building. All right, Kevin Lockley, this is Miami. Good Thank luck tonight. Thanks, okay. Kevin, for joining us live. Let's go on to the Miami Dolphins. Stephen Braggs has re-signed with the team. He'll take the place of the injured Vesty Jackson immediately on the roster spot. Now, it's not the defense, but the offense that has come under fire of late for the Dolphins, specifically the offensive line that has given up eight sacks in the past two weeks. I must face a tough New Orleans unit this weekend. Senator Burt Widener told me the last two weeks have been tough, but the line will get better. It's, it's, it's the character, too, you know, how much can you bounce back? And, uh, I know this offensive line, you know, we like each other very much. We're all close friends. We back each other up very well, and uh, I think we'll pull together. 
Big college weekend for the Sunshine State. The third-ranked Seminoles will host the Gators Saturday at noon. This game is usually the season finale for both teams. But the following week, the Gators play Alabama for the SEC title. Bobby Bowden thinks that gives the Gators an advantage. If they beat Florida State and lose to Alabama, they don't get a major bowl. They lose to Florida State, beat Alabama, they get a major bowl. That distracts a little bit. But I also think it throws Florida in a very loose mood, uh, mode, coming here and play real loose. Sometimes people play better that way. Now I know tomorrow's Thanksgiving, but there's still time to get your turkey. And then check this out. The sport of turkey bowling taking place in Dayton, Ohio. And this is the only sport where you want a foul. And if you're able to gobble up the pins and knock them down, you got to keep the turkey we bowled with. It's all for charity. Each try costs a dollar with the money going to fund a Christmas toy drive. Again, 7.30 tonight, the Miami Heat against the Indiana Pacers, hoping to get back in the winning track after losing four straight. Kelly and Tony, back to you. Every time you go bowling, it's turkey bowling, right? <laughs> Pretty Thanks much. It was that foul, I think. Okay. The age-old <laughs> art has become a national phenomenon. Tattoos are popping up everywhere. Oh, Not just for bikers anymore. The stars want them. Famous models use them. Tattoos have become the fashion statement of the 90s. Mm -hmm. But how expensive is the body art, and what if you want it removed? For all the details, watch this Entertainment Tonight exclusive right here on Channel 4 at 7.30. Hmm. And we want to remind people, because tomorrow's Thanksgiving, we'll be taping the Dan Marino Show tonight ah. at the Dan Marino American Sports Bar and Grill at Cocoa Walk at 8 o'clock. Time to say goodnight. We thank you for joining us. NBC Nightly News coming up next. And we'll see you back here at 11 for the Channel 4 News Nightcast. Have a great night.